Well, I want to invite the EBAT family. You guys can come on up. They're going to share the Christmas story. So kids, how many kids do I have in the room? Where are my kids at? Raise your hands. All right. If you're raising your hand and you're a kid, you can come gather right up here at the front. We upgraded this year. We got costumes. We got the whole thing this year. Come on. This is it right here. It's going to be amazing. Look at all these kids. This is beautiful. All right. Who wants this? Do you want this? Hi, guys. This is so exciting. We are so glad to be here with you on this Christmas Eve. You guys all look amazing. What a beautiful morning we've had so far. So in our family, one of our Christmas traditions, probably many of yours, is we like to do role play and act out the nativity scene. Sometimes we've done it in front of grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins. We put on our bathrobes. We put on towels. We bring pillows for sheep. We do all those fun things. So we thought our family, Hosanna, <laughs> we thought our family, we could um, dress up and, and have a visual for you guys as Kevin reads the Bible story from Luke 2 and Matthew 2. And then, since we don't really have shepherds this year and wise men, but we have three, we need three volunteers. When it's time, we would love for you to bring up, what do you think are the three things the wise men brought? Yes. Yes. So we have, obviously, this is not exactly what it would look like many years ago, but this would be something that I would love if you could bring. Yes. Okay, I'll give one to you. Hosanna, can you sit right here? And you can have one. And, okay, you can have one. Okay, so when it's time, we're going to have you guys bring up the gifts to the manger, and we're going to use that as a visual again of the gifts that we brought, that the wise man brought Jesus. Okay, so we're going to, and then after that, we're going to have a few questions, and um, then we'll go from there. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. <laughs> so we'll just start and get our troop of angels all set up. Okay, so from Luke 2. <clears throat> In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this, was, this might be. And the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be a great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. <clears throat> and, the, and Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing will be called impossible Nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me <laughs> according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinus, Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph went up to get from Galilee, to, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. 
And in, the, sorry, and in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. And lying in a manger, and suddenly there was an angel with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And, it was, and all who heard it wondered what the shepherds told them, wondered about what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for, they, for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came into Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all chiefs and priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. <laughs> Far from you, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. <clears throat> and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they, when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, such as gold and frankincense. And last was myrrh. Thank you, guys. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way, and an angel organized the gifts. <laughs> okay. So, kiddo, my baby, do you want to... Okay. So few questions for you about this. Um, where, did Mary, where did Joseph and Mary travel to? <laughs> Bethlehem. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, Hosanna. And then, okay, that's great. And then who told the shepherds about the baby? That's right, the angel. Uh, and then how did the wise men know? The shepherds. The wise men knew because of the star. That's right. And then, what did the wise men bring? That's right. Myrrh, frankincense, and gold. Awesome. Um, and then, and then last is when do we celebrate this? When? Like what day? Christmas Day. That's right. All right. That's awesome. Yeah, we celebrate the greatest gift of Jesus, who came to have a relationship with you and I. And thank you guys so much for spending this time with us.
Wow, wasn't that great? It was so good. Let's keep it up there. Wow. Well, I'm not going to stay up here for a long time, and, but we are going to participate in communion in just a minute, so you can go ahead and find that. I just want to mention, as a church, we practice open communion, so if you're not a member here, we invite you to participate and join with us. The one thing we do ask is that uh, as you partake of this, that you do know Jesus, that he's the Lord and Savior of your life. Speaking of which, I love in Luke 2, verse 10, the angel says, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior. A Savior. Do you know what that word Savior means? It means deliverer. It means deliverer. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a deliverer who is Christ the Lord. And this deliverer was good news of great joy. Good news. You want to hear the best news this morning? It's right here in Luke 2. You won't hear better news, I promise you. You will not hear better news than that Jesus was born he died, he rose again. It's the greatest news, it's the greatest story, it's the greatest thing that has happened because he is the reason for everything. Good news for great joy. A deliverer, one that brings joy, one that brings peace, one that saves, one that forgives, one that gives eternal life, one that frees, one that gives us a reason to be alive, one that restores, one that gives us meaning and purpose in life. It's all in Jesus. He is our hope. He was the hope for the shepherds, which is why they said this is good news. Not because everything in life is easy, but because we know the one that gives us everlasting hope. I've experienced a lot of loss in my life, and we've walked through some loss with, with some people this year, and it's been very, it's been hard. Can I just tell you something this morning, that life is not easy. Not everything in your life is going to go your way. The reality is that this life is but a vapor, the word says. And that's a sobering statement. It means whew, it's here, but it also goes. And the reality is this, Jesus gives you purpose in your life. Not only that, but he gives you fulfillment in life. The only way that your heart can be truly satisfied is through Jesus. This boy, this baby that was born in a lowly stable in Bethlehem that grew up just like we grow up, yet without sin, so that through his death on the cross and him conquering death, he went through and endured everything that we do, pain, suffering, trial, weakness. And yet Hebrews, in Hebrews 4, verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16, therefore let us draw near with confidence. How can we draw near with confidence? Because I'm not doing it on my own. Because I'm not trying to walk through the trials and the suffering of life and get through things just on my own. But I'm doing it because there's a high priest who's gone before as a baby, as a man. Tempted in all things so that we would receive mercy and grace in time of need. Through him, you have deliverance of sins. You don't have to figure it out on your own. You don't have to worry what will happen when you die. You don't have to go through life trying to figure it out. You're justified. You're made righteous. There's a Savior who was born for you, died for you, and raised for you. And his name's Jesus. This is the gospel. It's good news. 
But God demonstrated his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5, 8. John 3, 16, we all know the verse. We can probably all quote it. It's on a million bumper stickers, but you need to catch the reality that God so loved that he gave. God so loved. You want to hear an important message this morning? God loves you. He loves you right where you're at. He loves you in the midst of your sin. He loves you in the midst of your weakness. He loves you in the midst of loss. He loves you in the midst of the greatest highs and the greatest lows in the valley and the mountaintops. God loves you so much that he was willing to give his son and allow him to die on a cross so that you could be closer to him. God loves you, and no matter where you are at this morning, his heart is for you to draw near to him. Draw near. Draw near. So listen, I, I want to I just provide an invitation this morning. And the invitation is this. If you're in this room, and you're watching online, and you don't, you, don't, you, you don't know where you will go when you die, or you're not convinced or confident in your answer to that question. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're like, man, this is a great Christmas Eve service, but I, I really don't, I don't know this man. I don't know, I don't know about this. I want to invite you to meet him this morning. This isn't just a religious thing. We're not here for religion. We're here because Jesus desires relationship. And listen, there's a lot of people that worship a lot of gods that are not alive. They're dead. But I can tell you, Jesus is alive. He wants to walk with you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to be the, the anchor for your soul in times of difficulty. He wants to be the one cheering you on, the one that can bring you hope and peace in life. And he wants to give you eternal life so that you could live in heaven with him, so that you could live and have eternal life in him. And so I just, I want to provide an invitation this morning. If you're in the room and, and you feel your heart and you're like, I, I need to respond to this message this morning, I just want you to raise your hand. If you're in this room, just throw your hand up. If you're watching online, you can participate in this with us. All right, I didn't see any hands, but I still just want to provide one opportunity. and I just want everybody, just for a minute, just to put your hand on your heart. And if you didn't raise your hand, if you're online, I just want to pray, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for what you did. We thank you that you are our deliverer. And this morning, Lord, we step in. Lord, maybe, maybe there's someone watching right now that needs to meet you, Lord. We just thank you. Romans 10, verse 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, it's Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. And so it's very simple. It's Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you to forgive me. And right now I, I choose to make you Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for what you did on the cross for me. And this morning I step in to who you are and I choose to make you Lord over everything. And that's it. If you prayed that prayer, I'd love for you to just let me know afterwards. You can. You can let our, our team know online if, if you prayed that prayer. Listen, there's nothing that will change your life like knowing Jesus.
Last thing I want to do is I want us to partake of communion. So you can go ahead and open. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. This morning, as I was praying, this morning as I was driving in the rain, I just, I felt like the Lord said there was this place that I was talking with the Holy Spirit about Him bringing a fresh, refreshing rain, like a fresh yes. And so this morning, as we partake of this, if you know Him, maybe you're not walking with Him. Or maybe you're entering this time and you're like, man, I need, I need to just put a fresh yes in my heart to step in, to walk with him, to say, I will give my life for what, for the plans and purposes that you have. I will give my life for this. I just want you to say yes if that's in your heart. Yes, Lord. We will give our life. We will carry your message of the gospel, Lord. Just say yes. Thank you, Lord. For in the night that he was betrayed, he took the cup, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He broke it, and he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. took the cup and he said this this cup is this cup is my blood and so Lord right now we thank you for your blood we thank you for spilling your blood on a cross so that we could walk near to you, Lord, even closer to you, Lord, so that we could have forgiveness of sin, so that we could walk in, in righteousness, Lord, so that we could have eternal life. We thank you for spilling your blood, Lord. And we thank you for the blood this morning. The blood of Jesus that makes us whole, that washes us, that cleanses us. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. He, he says in 1 Corinthians 11, it says that this is the cup of the new covenant. So we thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you are the reason for this season, Lord. We thank you for what you've done for us. You can go ahead and take. Thank you, Lord. At Convergence, we partake of communion every Sunday, not because we're downplaying it, but actually because we believe that it's one of the most important things that we could do. Paul says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, 26, he says, for as often as you drink, as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we just believe we're gonna take Paul at his words. We're gonna proclaim his death until he comes. So we're so glad. You could go ahead and stand up and you can grab a candle. If you twist the bottom, the candle will come on. There you go. And we're just gonna worship to end. Just wanna encourage you, just worship Jesus. I love, I love the lighting. 
It's just a representation that Jesus is the light of the world. Let's go ahead and worship.
Come on, can we bless the Lord in this house tonight? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 All right. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Thank you, Jesus, that you're the light of the world. And thank you that as we go into, into 2024, Lord, that we're not lighting a lamp and putting it under a basket. Amen. But we're going to let our light shine. We're going to let our light shine. Like the star shone when you were born, Lord, would you allow us as your bride to shine in this hour? to shine in this season, Lord. We are not gonna shrink back, but we're going to come in boldly and courageously. And we're gonna let our light shine. Whatever you have in 2024, Lord, we say yes to letting our light shine. Yes to letting our light shine. Doesn't matter what the world says, what media says, we are gonna let Jesus shine. As we launch into 2024, Lord, we thank you. We thank you as a church family. We say yes to what you have in 2024, Lord. We're going to let it shine. We're going to let it shine. And it's not a this little light of mine. It's not a this little light of mine. It's a this radiant beam that is within me. Let it shine. And we thank you for that. <laughs> Ooh, I'm pumped. Come on. Jesus is good, guys. He's so good. Come on. Well, hey, I want to just re-announce again. Next Sunday, we will not be meeting in this room, but we will be meeting at the table, New Year's Eve at the table. Uh, we have a video coming out this week that you can watch and participate with us. I want to encourage you to take communion. We're going to take communion together, and we're going to just meet with family, friends, your table group, and just have a time of launching into 2024, all right? And then we're gonna meet January 7th back in this room. Really excited about launching into the year. We're gonna launch in with radical faith, stepping in, and I'm excited about that. Last thing is, is if it's in your heart, we also just, you can give this morning. I know we we have our normal offering time on Sundays. If you desire also to give an end of year gift, uh, you can do that before the 31st. And so we're just excited about what the Lord is doing as a church. Bless you. Bless your house. Bless your family. Bless all that the Lord is doing. If you're watching online, bless you. We're so glad that you tuned in with us. Have a great Merry Christmas.